Hello and welcome back to part two of the fully loaded Dash 8 Q400 series. In the first part we did flight planning, fuel planning, route planning, set up the aircraft, powered it up, keyed in the route into the FMS and got everything pretty much good to go. In this part we're actually going to be doing the takeoff and the reason this is important, I know I did a, a takeoff video before with the Q400 but that one was kind of VFR, just messing around weren't really following any procedures or rules. This time, because we have a flight plan, we have a SID, we're gonna to pretend to use ATC. Not gonna use ATC because they could complicate what would otherwise be a very focused video on just the Dash 8. Um, well, we're gonna pretend we'd use ATC. So we'll be taking off on uh, 280, climbing now to 5,000 feet, when typically ATC would contact us and then tell us what we can do after that. So I'm just gonna adjust the altitude hold over here. We're currently at flight level 230 for the altitude hold, so we're just going to bring that down to 5,000. Always important when you change the altitude with the uh, auto flight panel here, glare shield, to click Alt Select at the end of it. Good, so now we're good to go. So we're going to go to runway 28, so hopping over to the other computer, it is after all a fully loaded video, which means I'm using more than one computer. Um, our taxi route is going to be Victor 3, that's right about here, up to Tango then right on Bravo, we zoom out a bit, and then we can join the runway, I guess, of Bravo 2 or Bravo 1. It's a short takeoff and landing aircraft, so Bravo 2 would work just fine. Let me just check I've got everything set up the way I need it set up. I should have flaps 5 at this point. Good. Everything else is good. I have my fuel pumps on, hydraulic pumps, standby PTU pumps are all on, auto feather is on. We covered all this in the last video. Everything is good. We're not using ATC, so we don't really care about radios. We will turn our transponder on when we get to the runway. So time to taxi. Now I do have track IR on. I know some of you don't like it, but for me, it's actually a very big help for taxiing. Now, this one and two here means that the props are in their ground range. If, you get, if those lights go off, they're in flight range. So we want to keep the props fairly low. Power fairly low as we taxi here. Don't tend to use the brakes taxiing the Q400 tend to just re reduce the power back into the, the ground range. There you go, just went outside range there a little bit. Let's pop those brakes off. Speed limit taxiing is 20 knots. Now this current speed is down there, it's the magenta number, we're currently doing 4 knots ground speed. So we want to keep that down under 20. Always a good idea at this point to test the brakes. They're all good. Just looking for Tango Brava. Now, if you're not familiar with reading taxi signs, let me show you how they work. See these signs here? The black indicator is what you're on. So we're on Victor 3. The yellow indicator is what you're about to come up to. So that's Victor. We're looking for Tango Bravo. There we go. Victor 3 in black. Tango in yellow. Or yellow background. So this is the one we're going to do. Try to turn at less than 10 knots. Don't stop, but reduce speed. Now the way you turn this, you have a tiller for turning. So the way I typically find is best is full rudder and then feed in the tiller that way you don't just leap ahead. Now the nose wheel is slightly behind my bum. There we go, full rudder, right feed in the tiller. Not too much. And you should be able to come out of it lined up on the center line. Now we're looking for Bravo. I find feeding in the rudder first and then the tiller makes for a smoother turn. The tiller can be a little bit vicious. So we're on Tango, see Victor left, Charlie right, we're looking for Bravo. Ground speed is currently 14 knots. Alright, next turning is Bravo, so we're going to reduce the power. Back towards beta range. You should see the speed start to come down, so 14 knots, 13 knots, 12, 11. 10. Now again, nose wheel is slightly behind me. A bit like an MD-11 in that respect. And around we go. A 
nice and smooth. Now we're looking for Bravo 1 or Bravo 2. Just correcting my travel here with the rudder pedals. They're fine for corrections like that. Not so good for turning. There's Bravo 2 right there. 12 knots. I'm going to pull slightly back to beta range again. Alright. Now we're going to wait here run through our checks. I turned a little bit too sharp there. But that's fine. Just line up here and wait. So back in the beta range, put the parking brake on. Okay. I turn track IR off and we'll start working through the flows and checklists. So now we're looking at before takeoff. So on the other computer, again, if you're a member of the Facebook group, facebook.com slash frugal sim, you can download all this stuff if you have Avlosoft EFB. So captain's flow before takeoff. Trims, make sure they are set. That one is fine. These are neutral. We're all good there. Takeoff warning test has been tested already. Flight taxi switch should be in flight mode. Like so. Anti-collision switch should be white on strobes. It's currently on rev. There we go. I didn't have the taxi lights on. I should have done. Taxi, landing, and approach lights. All the lights are on now. We are looking good. So now we can go to the first officer before takeoff flows. Remember, flows are things that you would typically memorize. I'm just bringing them up on the other computer here so that you can see them and to remind me. So first officer before takeoff. Flight attendant notification, let's say we did. Transponder and TCAS. Just click and hold the button next to transponder and TCAS. It will turn on ALT, which is what we want. Control lock needs to be released. I actually didn't set that in the previous video. So thank you to the commenter that pointed that out. Condition levers should be a maximum, which they are. Terrain and radar display as required. Well, we're going to go on uh, weather up here. Leave that one as it is. We'll turn that on in a minute. Confirm fuel on board. We've already presumed that's good. I don't have any fuel leaks. I don't have failures turned on, so we're good to go. So having done flows, and they would typically be done simultaneously, um, then we can go to the checklist. So af not after starting frugal. That would be foolish. All right, so before takeoff checklist, flight attendant notification is complete. Takeoff briefing, well, we already gave that. We're running up runway 28 right, following runway heading of 280, climbing to 5000, at which point we'll expect vectors to somewhere, and hopefully I'll climb up to flight level 230. Condition levers are max, trims, all three are set. Takeoff warning tests have been done. Flight controls, always a good idea to check them. Just yanking and banking right now, making sure everything is good. Yep. Flight taxi switches in flight radar and terrain uh, terrain and weather radar is all set. Transponder TCAS is on. Let's turn the bleeds on. Well, they're on minimum as required, so we're fine. We're actually going to turn the bleeds on, on. External lights are on. Runway heading we will check after we are lined up. So, parking brake off. Let us now go line up. Always a good idea to check the runway. I don't have any other aircraft in this, but not a bad idea to get in a good habit. Even if you're cleared onto the runway by ATC online, always a good idea to check. All right, full left rudder, start feeding in the tiller. I think we can consider ourselves lined up. So with that done, we're on the runway, gonna hold it on the brakes, turn track IR off, bring up the next checklist. Well, this is gonna be the one that's gonna be done in a hurry. It is our after takeoff flow or initial climb flow. So we're gonna look at flaps up, condition levers to 900, not maximum, auto feather off. Don't need to push the power switch. Aux pumps off, standby hydraulic pressure and PTU pumps go off bleeds go on during the climb. This is up to 400 feet. Taxi light off. Pressurization panel. Check it. 
and everything else is good to go. So with fur without further ado, let us take off. Now bear in mind, we already set up the order flight panel. Everything is good. We're on heading hold 280, IAS holder 185, which is our climb speed. We should be good. All that remains is for us to take off, try to get some speed up and climb. So here we go. This is for V1 at 127. V2 and rotate are at 130, so very close. And then we're looking for flaps reduction speed around about 140. Getting a little off track of the runway there. Coming up on V1 now. Let's try to get back on the center line here. There we go, V1, rotate, aircraft actually flew itself off. Positive rate, gear up. It's not nose up too much. Aircraft flew itself off the runway because we had the correct trim set in, elevator trim. So flaps are up now, we're above 400 feet. So let us now turn these taxi lights off. But what we can do now is just arm the autopilot. So your damper on, autopilot on. It has control, not me. So let's go ahead and now turn the bleeds on. There we go. I'm going to turn all these pumps off down here. That off, that off, that off, that off. Auto feather off. We are climbing nicely now, so power back or props back to 900. We're actually not in heading hold. Now we are, my mistake. Always a good idea to keep an eye on the instruments. I'm not gonna break the video and re-record it for that because there's no ATC. I think it's useful to you to see. Keep an eye on this stuff. If you're drifting, of course, catch it early. And here's our speed now coming up to 185. Now there is no auto throttle in this, so once we get at 5000 level off, we will need to adjust our power. But before that, let's assume ATC contact us. That's the altimeter warning there. ATC contact us and tell us to proceed direct to our first waypoint, which is Cody. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Go down here, we click on direct to, select Cody, number 5, enter, there we go. Back up here now, click on nav. Now we're in nav and we will increase our altitude now to 23,000 feet, flight level 230. You can already see the speed is starting to come up. Let's go alt cell, IIS, roll this down. There we are, 185. Lots of rapid clicks there. It's not that confusing. I dialed in a new altitude, we leveled off at 5000 which means the speed started to come up so straight away I clicked on IIS and then used the wheel here to dial up a climb speed of 185 as we previously discussed. So with all that done, let us continue looking at our checklists and see what else needs to be done. So our initial climb check, we didn't quite finish that, we got a little bit busy. It gets even busier actually if you have got ATC. So initial climb, let's take a look. Flaps are now up, yes they are. Condition leaves are 900, auto feather is off. Aux pump switches are off. Standby hydraulic BTU is off. Bleeds are on and normal. Taxi light is off. Pressurization panel, whoops. Should all be good, we haven't changed anything there. It's all on auto. Yes, so we're all good. So our initial climb flow is good. What's next? Now we have our climb checklist. So checklist, landing gear up, yes. Flaps up and zero. Power is set. Auto feather. My goodness, I'm sorry about the view jumping like that. Auto feather is off. Our standby pumps, auxiliary pumps are all off. Our engine temperatures, we're looking good. We're on the green. No problem at all there. Good idea to keep an eye on those, obviously. Bleeds are normal. Cabin temps and pressures are checked. Ice protection we don't require. And here we are in our climb up to our first waypoint. It is as simple as that. Quite a lot to do. And you'll find that if you have ATC, there is even more to do because you're also managing changing radio frequencies and speaking to those guys. Can't wait for the next version of this aircraft to come out when you can have a live co-pilot. Incidentally, we've got some clouds and fuzziness up here, so let's go ahead and turn the weather radar on. There it is. We have weather radar selected over here, terrain over here. I 
I think I turned it into test. Let's try that again. There we are. And while that's running up, let's change the range that we are looking at on the uh, PFD there. Let's dial it up so we can see more of our route. Quite a murky day here in Pittsburgh. Quite a bit of cloud. Yellow and red, pretty severe cloud, um, rain and storms. Don't have any of that in front of us. It seems to be mostly green. So we're all good. I'm not going to cut the video. I'm just going to let it keep on climbing up. We are above 10,000 feet now. So the next stage, obviously, landing lights off. We could at this point reduce the prop levers to 850, which is a uh, noise abatement procedure and also, also I think, power uh, fuel fuel saving. We're not going to bother with that. We're good as we are. We will, will reduce them probably as we get up into the cruise, just to make a more comfortable cruise for the passengers. Scenery outside, by the way, is GEX and UTX. I'm not using FTS Global. Weather is being provided by Active Sky on the second computer, as always, and the weather textures are Rex. You will find as you get higher, the rate of climb decreases. That's quite normal. Oh, we should probably go standard, by the way, right about now. There we are. Why is that not working? Push. There we go, 292. You go standard as soon as you're above the uh, transition level. The reason for that, by the way, is local weather will affect the air pressure and give you different altitude readings. Um, so once you get above a certain transition level, to make sure everybody is, is at the same height, if they all claim to be at 5,000 or 10,000 feet or whatever, we go standard. That's why we do that. So all that remains is once we get into cruise, you'll see IAS here change to pitch hold. Or oh, sorry, alt. You'll just see alt, meaning we're holding 23,000 feet. Then all you need to do is watch the speed. It will start to climb. You just need to monitor that. If it starts to approach dangerous levels like overspeed, then reduce the power a little bit. That is all there is to it. In the next video, we're going to do some more complex stuff. We'll be descending into Newark, and I'm going to show you how to use the rather odd uh, VNAV mode of this Dash 8 Q400, which a lot of people seem to have a problem with. So until then, my name is Frugal. Thanks for watching.